What is going on everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be jumping into my best controller settings here for Warzone 2. I personally play with a scuff controller here on PC, but these settings will be entirely good for everybody that uses a controller. Now let's get into this and break it all down for you guys here in the easiest way possible. So of course my aim input device is going to be the controller, obviously. Uh, my button layout is here is just going to be kind of the default Warzone button layout. I haven't changed anything to alter it around. I don't believe that is necessary. Uh, after that, you know, I don't have the bumper ping on. My stick layout is on default. My controller vibration is on. You guys can have this on or off. It doesn't really matter. It's just kind of a personal preference thing. I've had it on like literally since I've been playing Call of Duty. So for me, it just kind of feels like regular, just natural for it to be there. Um, you guys don't have to have it. Or maybe you have a controller that does not even have the rumble packs in it. It's kind of one of those things. Trigger effect. This is something you should 100% have off. You do not want any of that haptic feedback. You don't want any pressure or any sort of resistance when you're trying to pull in those triggers that does not need to be a thing especially in call of duty maybe like some single player story mode games that'd be good but not for this um getting down here to some of the nitty gritty stuff kind of like my aiming so my horizontal stick sensitivity is a six and along my vertical stick sensitivity uh, i want you guys to keep in mind that your sensitivity is going to be a personal preference thing and everybody's going to be a little bit different a lot of pro players tend to play on something that is kind of lower like maybe like a four to a six somewhere in there and they have some of the best accuracy in the entire game I believe a six gives me the perfect amount of you know ability to turn and flick around on people while also not having me overcorrect and kind of like you know go way off because if your accuracy is not going to be on point and you're going to be kind of missing shots left and right especially the recoil being as low as it is with some of these builds i would highly suggest you lower your sensitivity down and that does lead me to my next thing here which is going to be the ads sensitivity multiplier which mine is on a 0.8 so when it's at a 1.0 when you're aiming in that means you get a hundred percent of your you know six six sensitivity for instance i lowered it so i get you know 0.8 of that six six sensitivity right there and that allows me to even when i'm trying to snap onto somebody it slows me down even a little bit more making it so that there is less of a possibility for me to overcorrect, overshoot or miss something granted there's aim assist and everything my accuracy is pretty solid when i actually have this setup so i recommend for you guys you have it a 1.0 move it down a little bit to like 0 0.9 0 0.8 somewhere in there my sensitivity multiplier i just keep everything on 1.0 i don't believe it to be necessary to alter that and my vertical aim axis i mean since some of you guys are going to be asking me i mean it's going to be on standard uh no reason to change that either now my aim down sight behavior is going to course be on hold that's what it should naturally be on you guys do not want it to be on anything else um i change zoom shared input this is just you know sprint tax sprint focus uh, automatic sprint this is on automatic tactical sprint so this is a huge thing so we have off automatic sprint and automatic tax sprint that means just by holding forward on my stick i can actually you know get that automatic tax sprint without having to constantly mash in that left stick and what that does when you mash in that left stick all the time is that will end up causing stick drift and a whole bunch of other stuff that pretty much like chocks your controller and makes it so you have to go get a new one. So we're trying to save our controllers, elongate their life and use an automatic attack sprint. Just keep in mind though, that if you are trying to use a shotgun, this will probably be a little bit cumbersome because you're gonna wanna sprint and with shotguns, you're mainly hip firing and that doesn't work too well. But for everything else that's not a shotgun, it works out perfectly. Your equipment behavior is gonna be on hold, your uh, weapon mount activation, ADS plus melee, I just leave it at that. Um, interact slash reload behavior what you want to have this on is prioritize interact so if you're playing something like multiplayer tap to reload is going to be the way to go you always want to be able to have that on but pretty much for wars and you want to be able to prioritize interact aka so that when there's something on the ground you're running by you can just you know tap square if you're on playstation or i believe it's x if you're on xbox to be able to pick up something really fast that's how you're able to see people loot really quickly and then obviously if you're up around a bunch of loot in order to be able to reload you just have to hold in that square button so this is something you just maybe have to get used to if you're not normally used to using it but prioritize reload is not really the greatest for warzone that means you're just gonna be prioritizing you know reloading over picking stuff up and that can cause you have to hold down on things a lot more often so i just recommend prioritize interact is this works out great and of course your armor plate behavior you want to have this on apply all so that way you can just apply all of your plates when you like hold down triangle or y i believe on xbox uh just to you know get all those plates back in now i'm moving over here to the advanced category and i also want you guys to keep in mind i'll have a couple other settings here at the end that aren't necessarily controller related but are still super incredibly beneficial to have so i'll show you guys that later but 
the advanced category here a target aim assist is on of course aim assist type is black ops black ops is definitely the way i'd recommend to go if you guys are going to consider changing it go from either default to black ops do not really mess with precision or focusing those are kind of the two you really don't want to mess with black ops tends to be the best uh, most consistent and also sometimes the stickiest aim assist which is kind of ridiculous if you ever play something like x defiant here over the past few days when that beta was out you notice the aim is just there and here is drastically different and it's really sticky on this game in comparison so um, i'd recommend if you guys run black ops or default it's up to you um ads aim assist the course is on third person ads correction type is assist um, and then of course my aiming down here now let's go down this is gonna be something i'm gonna have to explain to you guys in depth so your aim response curve type this is up you know in debate for a lot of people so standard really isn't bad that's just kind of like you know the standard aim assist i mean well it's been call of duty for a long time they kind of alter it just ever so slightly but uh, the linear here this is like literally no matter what you're doing the, the input on your stick is going to be the same as it is in game if you're trying to build that muscle memory or something like that this will be a pretty solid one for you but i personally roll dynamic and i'll explain this here why so what it actually says here is the reverse s curve mapping for fine aim rate control so what this means is that there in the graph there's going to be an s curve on like your stick input so little movements are going to actually like have a really fast movement acceleration so that means that even though i have a six six sensitivity it's not like i have to really yank my stick over as i would on linear i can just minorly hit it and that means that i will move actually you know significantly more which can be really beneficial and i would say that you know allows you to make those you know really snappy uh flicky plays and obviously call of duty and especially modern warfare 2 is a very reaction based game so having the ability to really make that you know quick flick is something that you guys should definitely try out and get used to this will probably be the best aim response curve type you can use linear is not bad by any means but dynamic is definitely the way to go if you want to be the best call of duty player possible my ads sensitivity multiplier here is going to be on a 1.0 and then my ads sensitivity transition timing is on instant you always want it on instant the more snappy you can be in this game the better uh, my custom sensitivity per zoom is just on off i don't believe you need a custom sensitivity per zoom you guys can alter it if you really want to i just leave it on off because i want the same universal aim assist or aim sensitivity pretty much per zoom i don't really care i also don't really use a lot of those optics i, I rarely snipe so it's not really going to be that beneficial to me but some of you guys can i guess you can mess that if you really want to i leave it on off um, my input dead zone here this is another thing that is pretty crucial to understand so for any guys out there that are wondering why in the firing range or my, my bad not the firing range why in the gunsmith your guns are like when you tune them are going to be like moving a little bit like the tunes kind of randomly move and it's because your left and right stick dead zone is going to be a little bit too low for the amount of stick drift your controller has for me personally because i do play you know controller on pc so i can move my mouse right there um, and then i can go back i sometimes have that issue with my controller but i can then use my mouse to do those fine tunings and kind of like take my controller out of the equation um the default is a 0.15 i moved it all the way down to a 0.5 especially after playing x to fine i felt how slow and sluggish it was and how much of a kind of like you know a dead zone i had and i kind of gradually moved it down and the more you move it down the more obviously you're gonna react quicker and i'd recommend for you guys to do that and to try to get used to it if it's not a 0.15 slowly move it down to like you know a 0.10 maybe 0.7 a 0.5 i don't really recommend maybe going all the way down to zero i haven't even got there yet but a 0.05 you know is it's very close to zero without it being entirely zero so you guys can try that out uh it's just going to make you a little bit more snappy a little more flicky which can definitely help you get out of some pretty sticky situations and then of course my right left stick max i just leave this right here as is and my left and right trigger is on a zero uh just because i don't believe there needs to be any input dead zone for a trigger yeah, as soon as you want to touch that thing that's when you want something to happen so we leave that at zero to make it as fast as humanly possible um after that my control orientation is up i mean obviously like i don't i don't see why anyone would change this uh gyro behavior i don't even really use any of this i don't think this is like something that a lot of people are even going to try to use the gyro aiming is kind of one of those settings that a lot of people just kind of disregard because it's not beneficial and if it was beneficial i'd show you guys how to use it because i'd be using it uh, but it's not really you know beneficial uh, my fov sensitivity scaling you guys definitely want to have this on and we'll get into some fov stuff here in a second to kind of show you why it's beneficial but uh fov sensitivity scaling is definitely got to be on 
and we'll just kind of go down here all the way down to the very bottom but a lot of this stuff is just kind of gyro and we don't really need to talk about that here's something we need to take a look at here which is going to be your general movement your grounded mantle you want that on off your uh, automatic airboard mantle off automatic ground mantle on off and the reason you want these like turned off is just because the more objects you run close to or maybe you jump by if you're trying to jump shot for whatever reason if you're jump shotting by something there is a possibility that your character will like randomly mantle something to the right to the left behind you and you don't even understand why you know it shows to mantle something so we do not want any of that mantling on unless we physically go up to it and go mantle it like you know with that that intention so Keep that on off that way you don't accidentally mantle something that can be super frustrating and has happened to me so so many times where i accidentally mantled and so i make sure to have all these settings off and my tax burn behavior if i wanted to have it is just going to be double tap but otherwise down here really don't have too much to go over other than i guess really other than nothing there's not much down here towards the bottom with the vehicle behaviors and overlay behaviors all right well that's all the settings i got for you guys here today if you enjoyed the video give it a like subscribe and of course check out this other video on screen where i use the m4 a perfect setup here for solos